this image that I have here is from Greek mythology. If any of you ever read the Odyssey, the Odyssey when Odysseus was um, was on the ship, he was he was passing through the Straits of Messina, heading home, and there were two monsters. One was Charybdis, this whirlpool monster, and one was Celia, which was more like a, a narrow border. And he had to pass the boat through these monsters. And this is symbolic of our emotions. When we go too into either monster, we get swallowed whole. And so he had to navigate the strait very, very finely so that he can get out of danger. And this is the same thing we have to navigate so that we can get home to ourselves, trust ourselves, connect back to a cosmic force, our intuition, understand our, our life story, our journey, why all this happened to us. This has to be navigated. This straight has to be navigated. And if it doesn't, you get swallowed whole. So everybody close your eyes and take a few deep breaths and connect to your first chakra. And breathe into the chakra and try to feel yourself in your seat. Like really try to feel heavy in your seat. Your legs feel weighted down. You really feel heavy and present in the lower extremities. And I want you to bring up one limiting thought or thought that chips away at your self-worth that up until today, again, whether it's true or not, does not matter. You have believed it at some point about yourself. A thought you have about yourself that limits your self-worth. And when you have that thought constellated in your mind's eye, I want you to imagine this whirlpool monster, this Charybdis monster. And I want you to take that thought, whether it's in your mind's eye, you, you, you metaphorically have it in your hands, it's woven into your first chakra, just put it into your energy field, really pronounced. And I want you to jump into the monster. And I want you to let the whirlpool monster swallow you and just take you and take you and take you all the way down, let it drown you until you hit the bottom of the ocean floor. And it's a whirlpool, you can't really breathe well, your arms might be flailing, you feel that you can't get out of the grabs of this monster. And as you're fighting your way out of it or trying to breathe, I want you to name the emotion. Don't judge it. The first thing that comes up, ask the monster what emotion is drowning you and name it. Don't judge it. Within two seconds, you should have the emotion. And as soon as you have the emotion, naming it or feeling it, recognizing it, releases you out of the monster and you're safely back into your chair and you can breathe into your body again. And when you're ready, open your eyes. This emotion, it, mine was hopelessness when I first started on this. This emotion, Jen of sadness, me of hopelessness, you of whatever you named it, that is the emotion, just so you know the origins of it, that you felt in the womb when you were in your mom's belly. That is the emotion that you go to, that you seek out your breadcrumb to feel love. So when you can name the emotion, we have a, a big problem in this country. It's called alexithemia. People can't name their emotions. Uh, they did a study and the main emotions were mad, sad, and angry. That's it. So look at this, sorrow, pitiful, sadness, hopelessness. These are profoundly felt emotions, when they appear as insignificant, even if it's just for a fleeting moment, you know, that you see a car accident on the road and you feel that, 
or if it's something more severe that's happening in your family or in your relationship, you are back in the womb. You feel you are getting your needs met through that emotion. You have learned to adapt to a system through that emotion. That was the way you were allowed to be in that system. And you took out your Costco card and you said, oh, everybody here has that same sadness, that same pity. I'm home, baby. Hmm. And so we have this radar where we seek that same emotion or the flip. Mm -hmm. And then we're attracted to people that seem to have the opposite of pity or the opposite of sorrow. It's not. The opposite is the same. That is how we find friends. That is how we find romantic partners. Because all we're looking for is home. And the emotion is home. Our first home in the womb, our childhood home where we were allowed with that emotion to exist, to survive. Mm -hmm. 